What's happening, everybody? On today's show, it's our SEC Week 12 winners and losers. We now have a Heisman favorite coming out of the SEC and some news and notes ahead of rivalry week in the conference. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Uh, make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. We are uh, free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube part of the Locked On Podcast Network covering your team every day. And shout out to our everydayers who keep coming back and checking us out each and every day. All right, we got plenty to discuss, plenty to jump into. Let's do it. Let's dive into our winners and losers of the weekend. As we always do, we start with our winners of the weekend and an unlikely candidate to kick us off today uh, as Arkansas was playing a cupcake. But Sam Pittman is a winner of the weekend. Why is Sam Pittman a winner of the weekend when we had so many other better teams playing? Well, Sam Pittman is returning to Arkansas for next season, according to uh, multiple reports. Matt Zenitz of 24-7 Sports was the first to have it Sunday morning, sharing that uh, Sam Pittman was informed that he is coming back next season. Later in the day, Arkansas Athletic Director Hunter Juracek released a statement saying, this has not been a season any of us anticipated. We have work to do. I'm confident that together we can meet the goals and the expectations of our program. Sam Pittman in his fourth season as Arkansas's head coach, and uh, he will get a fifth year to try to get things back on track. The Hogs beat FIU on Saturday 44-20 to to improve to 4-7 and seven on the season. K.J. Jefferson with a nice resurgent game, throwing for three touchdown passes. He became the all-time passing touchdown leader in Arkansas history. So shout out to K.J. Jefferson, Rocket Sanders. He had just two carries for 15 yards. But Sam Pittman now 22 and 24 overall in his four seasons with the Hogs. And now he can put the rest, uh, you know, rumors of he's going to lose his job. There were rumblings just a few days ago that uh, oh, they're going to wait till the end of the season and then they'll cut ties. Keep in mind, we already had Jimbo Fisher fired, Zach Arnett, and a lot of people just assumed Arkansas with the SEC expanding, Oklahoma and Texas coming to the conference next year, that they might do the same, but they are sticking with Sam Pittman. And if you look at Arkansas' schedule next year, it's it's navigatable is the word I would use. Uh, they get what would appear to be easy games in Arkansas, Pine Bluff, UAB, and Louisiana Tech. They have to go to Oklahoma State in the non-conference. Not a crazy. I mean, you know, if you have an offense, score some points, you can win that game. And their SEC home games next year include LSU, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Texas, a new, the neutral side game against AM, and then road games at Auburn, at Mississippi State, and at Mizzou. So to me, you know, just kind of on the surface looking at it, that's a seven and five, maybe eight and four is doable next year. So, but granted, they're going to have to address a lot of uh, concerns. They're going to have to uh, get that offensive coordinator position fixed and going to have to probably work in a new quarterback and solve a lot of their issues. But if they can, Arkansas, Sam Pittman can turn this thing around and a great guy by all accounts. Everybody you talk to has ever come in contact with Sam Pittman. Great dude. So, you know, rooting for him from that aspect. Let's see if he can do it. Another winner of the weekend. How about Jaden Daniels at LSU? They were playing Georgia State. LSU won 56 to 14. But Jaden Daniels put on a show going 25 for 30 passing for 413 passing yards, six passing touchdowns, and then in the run game, 10 carries for 96 yards and two rushing touchdowns. He tied an LSU school record for touchdowns in a game with eight, tying Joe Burrow. Uh, who did it back in 2019. He won the Heisman that season, by the way. And uh, in the Sunday sports books, 
three of the six major Heisman odds had updated to have Jaden Daniels listed as either the Heisman favorite or the co-favorite. Now, Bo Nix and Michael Penix, they're right up there having fantastic seasons at Oregon and uh, and Washington. But Brian Kelly said after the game, Jaden Daniels may be the best player he has ever coached in his 32 years of being a head coach. In the last two weeks, Jaden Daniels could be considered the best college football player in the country. The last two weeks, he's put up 1,100 total yards and 13 touchdowns. I don't care who the opponent is. That's damn impressive in college football. Uh, Jaden Daniels moved into second place in the LSU record book, being responsible for 75 total career touchdowns. He now only trails Joe Burrow, who had 88 touchdowns from 2018 to 2019. And Jaden Daniels, check out these numbers, now ranks first in the country in total yards, passing touchdowns, total touchdowns, yards per game, yards per pass, total passer rating, rushing yards by a quarterback. LSU is the number one offense in the country, putting up 562 a game. That's ahead of Oregon. And if you get hung up on his three losses, obviously, Caleb Williams, Tim Tebow, Lamar Jackson, RG3, all these guys won Heismans with multiple losses. Uh, Not his fault his defense is so bad. Bottom line is this. Jaden Daniels has been the most electric player in college football all season long. He deserves to win the Heisman, period. Heisman's not a team award. It's not, well, what's your win-loss record? No. Were you the most exciting player all season long in college football? Jaden Daniels has been that. He deserves to win the Heisman. Also need to show some love to Malik Neighbors, his running mate. Uh, Eight catches for 140 yards and two touchdowns this week. Neighbors leads the entire country in total receiving yards with 1424. That's ahead of the likes of Luther Burden and Marvin Harrison Jr. His 12 touchdown catches are fourth in the country. His teammate Brian Thomas Jr., he leads the country with 14 touchdown catches. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. will probably win the Bolitnikoff over him, but Malik Neighbors has been hands down one of the best wide receivers in the country all season. He should you know, be a finalist for the Bolitnikoff. I mean, why not give it to him? Marvin Harrison's been great. He'll go top five in the draft. Harrison will, but Neighbors, why don't you name him the best wide receiver in the country? All right, another winner of the weekend. How about Carson Beck at Georgia? They just continue to churn through the toughest part of their schedule unscathed as the Bulldogs beat up on the Tennessee Vols Saturday night, 38-10, to and quarterback Carson Beck having one of his best games of the year, going 24 for 30, 298 yards, three touchdown passes, no interceptions, and Carson Beck now over 3,300 passing yards on the year, 24 total touchdowns, just five picks. And the Bulldogs put up 472 total yards on the Vols versus Tennessee with just 277. Georgia was 9 of 13 on third downs, uh, 27 first downs in the game. Beck connected with Marcus Rosemey, Jack Saint for a touchdown, one with Dylan Bell, one with Brock Bowers. And Georgia now 11 and 0. One win away against uh, Georgia Tech this week, one win away from another undefeated regular season as they head to Atlanta to face Nick Saban in Alabama. Very impressive job, too, by the Georgia defense. Held the Vols to 130 rush yards and held Joe Milton to just 147 passing yards. Only one total touchdown on the day for the Vols. That was the third fewest points allowed all season long by the Georgia defense. And the Bulldogs are fifth in the nation in scoring defense, giving up just 15 points per game. Another winner of the weekend. How about Caleb Downs over at Alabama? Alabama getting a little bit of a respite this week as they Put it on FCS Chattanooga, crushing them 66 to 10. But freshman safety Caleb Downs scoring an 85 punt return in the third quarter, his first return of the season, and he took it to the house for a touchdown. He was also second on the team in tackles on the day with seven, had a pass defense as well. He has just been outstanding all season long. And Caleb Downs just showing another thing that he can do. Also, want to give a hat tip to Jalen Milrow, he threw for 197 and three touchdowns before he set up the second half. Connected with Jermaine Burton for a score. Uh, Burton went over 100 yards. Malik Benson had a touchdown. Robbie Utes as well. And Will Reichert kicked a school record eighth 50-yard field goal in his home finale for Alabama. He's closing in on the all-time NCAA scoring record. He scored 12 points to bring his career total up to 521. He's chasing Navy quarterback Keenan Reynolds, who scored 530 points in his career, and number two scorer, Louisiana Tech running back Kenneth Dixon, he had 522. So another field goal by Reichert will put him ahead of Dixon. 
And there you have it. Those are the uh, first portion of our winners of the weekend in SEC Week 12. Thank you guys so much for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we continue with our winners of SEC Week 12. I want to remind you guys, this episode is brought to you by our friends over at listening.com. If you're a college student, listen up. There is an incredible app called listening.com, which takes any academic paper, a PDF, class material, turns it into an audiobook. It can read math equations, technical words, and complicated documents. It knows to skip all the citations, footnotes, references, and let you uh, jump straight to the chapter or section that you want to listen to. It even has a one-click note-taking button where it automatically puts the last 10 seconds into a notepad so you don't have to type notes while you listen. Best of all, if you use the, our link, uh, listening.com slash locked on, you'll be able to get your first three weeks for free. So go ahead and give it a try. Usually it's two weeks free, but you get an extra free week when you go to listening.com slash locked on. That's L-I-S-T-E-N-I-N-G dot com slash locked on. Try them today. You will absolutely love it. And hopefully, look, you're heading into uh, spring semester. You want to get ahead of everything. Listening.com slash locked on. Going along here, Locked On SEC. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. Come on back tomorrow. We'll catch you up, catch you up on what all the coaches had to say from their Monday press conferences. Also, I want to remind you guys, Locked On, we've launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today, it's here for you covering 24-7, the top sports stories of the day with all of our local experts on Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, we got more winners of the weekend as we dive back into it. And uh, again, some big, big winners. We start with Luther Burden over at Mizzou. Mizzou's incredible season just keeps rolling on as they survived a scare from Florida, winning 33-31 on a game winner from Harrison Mevis as the Tigers improved to 9-2 and on the season, 5-2 and in the conference. And Mevis's game winner was made possible as Mizzou faced a 4th and 17 from their own 33 in the final minutes. But Brady Cook connects with Luther Burden for a 27-yard gain. First down Tigers, and they go marching down the field for their game-winning field goal. Luther Burden had one of his biggest games of the season. He had nine catches for 158 yards. It was his sixth 100-yard game of the season. And on the year now, 77 catches, 1,100 receiving yards, eight touchdowns. He has been special all season long. Just a sophomore. Good news for Missouri fans. You're going to get him for another season. I uh, also want to give a shout-out to Missouri running back Cody Schrader. 23 carries, 148 yards, and a touchdown against the Gators. Uh, Schrader continues to be the SEC's leading rusher, and he's got that pr- by a pretty good margin now. 1,272 rushing yards. He is over 200 yards ahead of Jaden Daniels, who's the second rusher in the SEC, and almost 300 yards ahead of Ray Davis at Kentucky who's the third leading rusher in the SEC. So shout out to the former Truman State running back, who was, he was awesome last year for Missouri, but he really took his game to another level this year for the Tigers. He's had six 100-yard rushing games this year, and he did so against the likes of LSU, Tennessee, Georgia. He's just been a stud, and he deserves all of the accolades he gets this year. He had Luther Burton. Another winner of the weekend, I'm putting Jackson Dart on here. It was a cupcake week around the SEC, and Ole Miss found themselves in a dogfight with Louisiana Monroe on Saturday morning, leading 7 nothing after the first quarter, and then just 7-3 to at halftime. But the Rebels put up 21 points in the third quarter, and they pulled away for a 35-3 to win. Ole Miss improves to 9-2 and on the season. They are an Egg Bowl win away from another 10-win season for Lane Kiffin. But it was another big day for Jackson Dart as he went 24 for 31 for 300 yards and three touchdowns, no picks. Connected on touchdown passes to Trey Harris, Caden Priestcorn, and uh, Dayton Wade. But it was a nice bounce-back game for Dart, who was held to just 112 passing a week ago against Georgia, where he uh, ended up getting knocked out of the game. They said could have come back in, but uh, kept them out because it was a blowout. But, of course... 
the little tidbit from Lane Kiff, Kiffin on his coach's show last week announcing Jackson Dart will indeed come back for his senior season next year. The Ole Miss Rebels, they are headed in the right direction, and what a year it has been for Ole Miss. Another winner of the weekend. It's a combo here. We're going Mississippi State linebackers, Bookie Watson and Jet Johnson. We're going to touch on the two schools here who fired their coaches a week ago, but we're starting with Mississippi State. Interim head coach Greg Knox led his Bulldogs to a 41-20 home win over Southern Miss. Welcome back Will Rogers, quarterback playing his first game on the field since October 7th, and he was solid. Threw for 144 yards and two touchdowns. The Bulldogs rushed for 238 as a team. To Lou Griffin caught a touchdown. Woody Marks caught a touchdown, but that defense was spicy against Southern Miss. How about linebacker Nathaniel Bookie Watson leading the team with 21 tackles and a sack, and his running mate, linebacker Jet Johnson, he had 18 tackles, a sack, and an interception, which he selfishly gave up, lateraled it, lateraled it to Marcus Banks, who took it to the house for a touchdown. Jet Johnson now has a chance to be the first SEC defender since 2011 to lead the conference in tackles in back-to-back seasons. He's currently first in the SEC with 117 tackles, one ahead of his teammate in Bookie Watson, who was 116. So you got to think of this egg bowl. I mean, they're both tackling machines as it is, but like, do you think Watson gives the wink-wink to Johnson and goes, hey, let's make sure you end up with more tackles than me at the end of the year? Uh, by the way, last person to lead the SEC in tackles in back-to-back seasons, Danny Trevathan from Kentucky did it back in 2010-2011. So uh, certainly an impressive feat, and Jet Johnson can put himself in that category. Credit to those guys, too, in the past year, having to deal with the death of their head coach, Mike Leach, uh, at the end of last year, and then the firing of Zach Arnett just a week ago. Uh, these guys have been through a lot. But they just keep battling. So, so give all these guys credit for Mississippi State. From Will Rogers, Tulu Griffin, Woody Marks, uh, Bookie Watson, Jet Johnson, all these guys. They've just had to put up with so much stuff in the last 365 days. Give them a lot of credit. But next up it is the Egg Bowl versus Ole Miss in Starkville on Thanksgiving night. We will uh, preview that game as the week goes along. The other guy who is serving as interim. We just gave Greg Knox some love for going 1-0 and as interim coach at State. But how about some love for Elijah Robinson leading Texas A&M to a 38-10 victory over Abilene Christian. That comes on the heels of the firing of Jimbo Fisher a week ago. Abilene actually took the early lead in this one on a pick six from quarterback Jalen Henderson. But Henderson settled down after that. Threw for 260 and two touchdowns. Freshman running back Ruben Owens, he led the team with 18 carries for 106 rushing yards and a score. Moose Muhammad went over 100 yards receiving. Anaya Smith playing his last uh, home game at Kyle Field. He had two catches to add to his career total. And the Aggies improved to 7-4 and four on the year, and they now turn their eyes to a difficult road trip at LSU. Onus is really going to be on that Aggie offense. Can they keep up with the LSU offense? which, again, has moved the ball all year on people. But the Aggies, their strength has been defense. So we'll see if they can slow down Jaden Daniels at all as uh, they will put an end to the season. Elijah Robinson still serving as the interim coach. Aggies will go to a bowl game. But um, we'll see where their coaching search goes. We'll uh, keep you guys up to date on that throughout the next couple of weeks. Another winner of the weekend, our last winner of the weekend, we got Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. Been one of the best receivers in the SEC all year. Had a nice day for the Gamecocks in their 17-14 win over Kentucky. Caught six balls for 94 yards, two receiving touchdowns. His chemistry with Spencer Rattler has been on point all year long, and Leggett is second in the SEC in total receiving yards, trailing only LSU's Malik Neighbors. Look, early in the year, I mean, they had injuries to their stud wide receiver, Juice Wells. This was supposed to be Juice Wells, but Leggett immediately stepped up, emerged as an elite wide receiver in the SEC. He's had six 100-yard receiving games this year. Uh, this week was his third multi-score game of the year. He's just been a monster target for Shane Beamer's crew. Uh, he, he had just 167 receiving yards all last season. So from 167 last year to you know, well over 1,000 yards this year, it's uh, been very impressive. And now the Gamecocks sitting at 5-6. and six. They have a great opportunity this week. They host Clemson. Win, 
and you're headed to a bowl game for a third straight season under Shane Beamer. Clemson sitting at seven and four, though. They have won three in a row, including ranked wins over Notre Dame and South and North Carolina in recent weeks. So going to be tough playing Clemson. But Shane Beamer telling us Sunday night that wide receiver Juice Wells could play for the Gamecocks this Saturday. He's not made an appearance since September 16th at Georgia with that foot injury. Uh, Beamer also optimistic O-lineman Case and Henry, Jackson Hughes, Trey Jones, along with Dakari and Joyner could all be back this week. So that is good news there. And there you have it. Those are our winners of the weekend. Hmm, we've missed a few teams out there. Who have we not talked about? Well, that's coming up next in our Locked on SEC Losers of the Week segment. Of course, uh, this is Locked on SEC. Still more to come. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network covering your team every day. Look, you guys have been scoring throughout this NFL and college season with our friends over at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers, you get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. Again, that's $150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. Just to give you a look at some of the early SEC lines this week, Ole Miss is a 12.5-point favorite in the Egg Bowl over Mississippi State in Starkville on Thursday night. That's Thanksgiving night. Uh, Missouri, they are a 7.5 road favorite at Arkansas, Bama, they're a 14-and-a-half-point favorite at Auburn in the Iron Bowl. So plenty of action there for you if you want to get in on it over at FanDuel. The app is super easy to use. they got spreads, player props, over-unders. All of it is up there for you. So go visit them right now, fanduel.com slash locked on. Kick off uh, the rest of the NFL season and the end of the college season, frankly. It is FanDuel. It is the official partner of the NFL. All right, roll along here, locked on SEC. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen every day. We got to our winners of the weekend, and that means we only got time left for our losers of the weekend. We don't like to call them losers, but man, we got some losers this week. And uh, first up, we start with. The Auburn Tigers, as Auburn gets blown out at home to New Mexico State, 31-10. to 10. Auburn paid the New Mexico State Aggies $1.85 million to come to Auburn and beat them. One of the worst non-conference losses by an SEC team in recent decades. Auburn was over a 20-point favorite. I think it was 23 and a half on Friday, and they lose by 21. Hugh Free saying after the game, it's disappointing. Felt like a bad dream, but I've had those before. Auburn didn't turn, here's the crazy part. Auburn didn't turn the ball over. They didn't have some crazy amount of penalties. They just couldn't run the ball. Two and a half yards per carry, and they didn't protect quarterback Peyton Thorne very well. New Mexico State's defense gave Auburn fits. And offensively, they were outgained 414 yards to just 213. 213 for Auburn. 23 first downs for New Mexico State. Auburn, just 12. Peyton Thorne threw for 148 yards. Jarquez Hunter, who had back-to-back-to-back 100-yard rushing games, eight carries for just 27 yards in this one. Auburn defense, just one sack on the day. It was as ugly as it gets on the Plains. Now, I will defend Auburn a little bit here. First year coach at a new school. Granted, Hugh Freeze has coached in the SEC before, but Nick Saban, his first season at LSU, he lost to UAB. Uh, Years later, Saban, his first season at Alabama, he lost to Louisiana Monroe. So bad losses in your first season at school can be forgivable, but the timing just really sucks for Auburn. We were all saying how impressive Auburn's been these last few weeks, running off win after win after win, starting to think, hey, They're going to give Alabama a fight in the Iron Bowl, and they still might. But the optics here are just not great, man. I mean, all all the momentum you built up for a couple weeks comes to a crashing halt, and well, bad for Auburn fans. Our guy Zach Blockerby over at Locked on Auburn, he was crying most of Saturday night. Kidding on that, but yeah, rough week for the Auburn Tigers. But hey, turn the page. If you upset Bama, all is forgiven. Won't even remember New Mexico State. That's going to be tough. 
Uh, other not winners of the weekend. I got Joe Milton in here over at Tennessee. I saw a clip of a bold prediction from an SEC media member back in July, and it wasn't that crazy at the time. Uh, but this guy predicted that Joe Milton would lead the SEC in passing yards. And it has just not been that at all. Joe Milton in the loss to Georgia this past Saturday, just 17 of 30 for 147 yards, no touch, no touchdowns, no picks. It's just been a disappointing season for the sixth year quarterback. He spent the first three years of his career at Michigan and now three seasons at Tennessee. His first two were backing up Hendon Hooker, but the thought was this year he's the starter. He was going to pick up the reins to the hypo offense and just keep this train going. And it just hasn't been that. Uh, the Vols are now seven and four overall, three and four in the conference. Uh, they will beat Vanderbilt this weekend. They will finish four and four, so 500 in the conference. At least I think they're going to be Vanderbilt. But uh, Joe Melton, he finds himself ranked seventh in the SEC in passing yards, just ahead of Jalen Milrow and Devin Leary, and behind guys like Jackson Dart, Graham Mertz, Spencer Rattler. Uh, Milton's 16 passing touchdowns ranks 10th among SEC quarterbacks. In another universe, you know, some Vol fans arguing that maybe they should have just rolled with the five-star freshman uh, quarterback, Nico Yamaliava, this year. You know, it, it, like, in other words, if we had said at the start of the year, look, you guys, the best you're going to do is go eight and four with Joe Milton at quarterback. I mean, wouldn't you have maybe wanted to go with Nico and get all the growing pains out so you go into next year where he feels good about himself, but he barely played any this year, so... Be very, very green next year. Do they immediately throw him out there? Do you maybe look to the transfer portal as a trend, you know, for bringing a transition quarterback? I don't know. But uh, just know, pretty disappointing considering the expectations that a lot of us had for Jill Milton this year. Another loser of the weekend, Billy Napier. Look, Florida actually put up a really good fight in Como against Missouri. They scored the go ahead field goal in the final minutes. Unfortunately, Missouri would answer. With a Harrison Mevis game winner, uh, Florida loses 33-31. But the Gators, just a few weeks ago, were 5-2 and two coming off of a comeback win at South Carolina, only to lose their last four in a row now to Georgia, Arkansas, LSU, and Mizzou. And now they have to play top five ranked Florida State in the swamp, and they need a win for bowl eligibility. That game does get a little bit more palatable with Florida State's quarterback Jordan Travis done for the year, but Florida, they had their quarterback Graham Mertz go down with injury this past week. Max Brown did okay coming on for him, but reports are a collarbone injury for Graham Mertz and done for the rest of the season. So if that's the case, it's going to be that much more difficult for Florida to get a victory. Now, Paul Feinbaum was on Matt Berry's show on Sunday, and he said he thinks you stick with Napier. He says if you fire Billy Napier, you're firing coaches on the line. I think next week is very important, though. I talked to people two weeks ago, uh, said it could happen, but they lose their quarterback. Short of embarrassment, it seems like Billy Napier is going to survive, but it's still tricky. Uh, Florida still currently holds the number five ranked recruiting class for 2024. And our last uh, depressed of the weekend, I've got Kentucky quarterback Devin Leary in here. I was among those who had very high hopes for the former NC State quarterback. Transferred into Kentucky this offseason, was thought to be one of the prize transfers of the portal. You bring back Liam Cohen as the OC. But even with that, this has just been an up-and-down season for Leary. Kentucky fell on Saturday 17-14 to at South Carolina, and the Wildcats dropped to 6-5 and on the season, 3-5 and in the conference. Devin Leary was 17 of 34, passing for 171 yards, one touchdown, one pick. He ranks ninth among SEC quarterbacks in total passing yards. And that 5-0 start to the season for Kentucky, just a distant memory. They have now lost five of their last six. And some good losses in there, losing to Georgia, Alabama, Missouri, Tennessee. But uh, Kentucky fans think of their program being above that of South Carolina. So losing to them feels like a bad loss. And Mark Stoops deserves some criticism here as well. Like we said, he's lost five of his last six down the stretch here. Stoops is the ninth highest paid coach in the country, making $9 million a season, paid very similar to that of Josh Heupel and Lane Kiffin. But he's ahead of guys like James Franklin, Jim Harbaugh, Mike Norvell, Kyle Whittingham. And since that 10-3 and three season in 2021, Stoops went 7-6 and six last year. And now six and five this season. 
this just feels like mediocrity. And he's got a big one this Saturday at Louisville. Kentucky around a touchdown underdog. They lose that one. They go six and six. Got to win the bowl game there to finish above 500. So just been a tough, tough go there for uh, Mark Stoops and company. All right, your latest uh, rankings in the polls that came out on Sunday. Georgia still the number one team in the country. Alabama number eight. Mizzou number 10. Ole Miss number 12. LSU moves up a spot from 15 to 14. And Tennessee, they were 25 in one poll, 23 in the other. So uh, those are your latest rankings with six SEC teams still ranked in the top 25. Thank you guys so much for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Again, shout out to our everydayers. Come on back tomorrow. We'll get you caught up on all the latest news coming out of the coaches at the podium on Monday. And uh, hey, for your second listen, Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on sports today here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league. So for your second listen, go to locked on sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 seven stream channel. I'm Chris Gordy. This has been locked on sec. We will talk to you guys tomorrow.